Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Here's the, uh, um, well, I don't want to, well, can I say, the crappy camera they got at Old Faithful. Zooming in to uh, some of the different geysers in the back basin there. Yeah, it's really poor. For the amount of money that the U.S. government brings in and spends, mostly sent overseas to other countries, you would think they could provide a decent camera with decent bandwidth and pix pixelization to see what's going on. Yeah, it's really bad. But um, currently we're being impacted by a solar stream from a corona hole there on the uh, southern part of the sun disk. And, of course, it will create a lot of earthquakes and... Um, yeah, affect our weather, things like that. Yeah. Let me show you the KP index. Here's the current KP index. Uh, current space weather conditions. It was up to, uh, five, which would affect, which would affect, um, GPS, electrical grids, uh, satellites, things like that. And I'm going to show you this. The increase in earthquakes there at Yellowstone. Of course, they're not reporting them. You can, I don't know. Can you see the ones marked in red? Those are the ones that the computer picked up that sends a notification to the geologist and they're supposed to come in and review it. And there's another one there, another one there, but I'm going to start with this one right here, which is in red. And you can see the heat that came up with this earthquake. Uh, this one here on the left, that is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. This one here is the promontory. I've been talking a lot about that lately. And on the right is West Thumb. And you can see here by the thickening of the lines how it's this weather. Um, the solar stream has been impacting Yellowstone. For those of you that do not know what a spectrogram is, Here's an explanation. A spectrogram is a particular way of visualizing the vibrations present in a seismogram, earthquakes. It shows how the frequency of the motion varies over time and how different frequencies of vibration appear at different times in the record. Red, yellow colors represent a stronger signal and blue co colors represent weaker signals. And I believe that's from Wikipedia or um, USGS. So going to the monitor that picks up the different earthquakes, here at the bottom we have the promontory. You can see an earthquake there and several up there. The middle one is West Thumb. Same earthquake, look at that. Same one. And at the top, I'll bring it up, this is the borehole from Yellowstone Lake. This earthquake right here that I extracted, that is there at the lake, not being reported. And I'll zoom in on it. Again, we got harmonic tremors. Many might be asking, what is a harmonic tremor? You know, they did not know about harmonic tremors. Did not know anything about them that they, that they even existed until Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. Maybe if they had known about them back then, then those 19 scientists and other people wouldn't have been killed when Mount St. Helens erupted. A harmonic tremor is a sustained release of seismic and infrasonic energy, typically associated with the underground movement of magma, the venting of volcanic gases from magma or both. And that's from Wikipedia. The uh, image they have for tectonic-like earthquakes really isn't very good but that they have here on uh, Wikipedia. But here we have shallow volcanic earthquakes. See how they go up and down? Surface events. And then another image of harmonic tremors. See that? It is a long-duration release of seismic energy with distinct spectral lines that often precedes or accompanies a volcanic eruption. You see that as a volcano, any volcano, uh, recharges for another eruption. 
Yellowstone is a very large volcano. It's been recharging. It's got two resurgent domes. That is where the ground is being pushed up by the magma under the ground. Um, for about 6,000 years, it's been slowly recharging. There is many trees along fault lines that are dying because of the release of the, these gases. You can see the tree die off over here. And there's trees around Old Faithful that are dying off because of the toxic gases that are coming up and killing off these trees that grew, grew up during what they call the quiet period of uh, Yellowstone recharging. Now, these trees, are, of course, are not 6,000 years old, but it's just an example of um, what to look off, what to look for with the tree die off. Yeah, I paused it by accident, sorry. There's been other times of gas being released where um, small buffalo have um, died suddenly, just dropped in their tracks in the past. This has also happened there at Long Valley Caldera, uh, Mammoth Mountain, California. They noticed this in um, uh, somewhere between 1980 and 1989. Several cross-country skiers died there because of this gas. They found one of the bodies in a restroom there at the park. And then another one was found within a, um, an indentation that's often made with snow that builds up around trees. And then close to the tree, there'd be like a hole. Another one died there. They figured both of them were overcome by the uh, uh, carbon dioxide gases. The man was reported missing, and the following day, the man's body was discovered in a deep cave in the snow called the Snow Well, adjacent to the wall and overhanging roof of a snow-covered outbuilding, an outhouse. The building is used in the summer as a restroom for Horseshoe Lake Campground. And at the time of the skier's death, only a small portion of the roof of the building remained above snow level, rendering the building inaccessible. The snow well was a natural occurring phenomenon formed by melting snow adjacent to the building, creating a cave or tunnel around the circumference of the restroom. The depth of the snow well reached five to six feet, and the width ranged from one to five feet. So it wasn't really a big area, one to five feet, a small patch, five to six feet high. Two entrances to the snow well were noted after the victim was discovered. And I'll give you a link to this if you want to read more. He was still wearing his ski and there was no evidence that he was trying to access the building, nor was there any evidence he was trying to seek shelter or spend the night. Two days after the body was discovered, a scientist working with USGS measured atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. Concentrations reaching 70% were noted inside the snow well. Back in uh, 2004 on the Bozeman Daily Chronicles, it was reported that five bison had died after being exposed to poisonous gases in a geyser basin at Yellowstone National Park. The dead animals were discovered March 10th at the Norris Geyser Basin. Two adults, two calves, and a yearling were found laying on their sides with their feet particular to their body, the announcement said. The unusual position of the carcasses indicated the bison died very rapidly as a group. Yep, they just dropped dead. They figured they succumbed to hydrogen, sulfide, and carbon dioxide emitted by the nearby, nearby thermal features. This was along the Gibbon River, and they think because of the cold weather that went through the area, causing the steam and toxic gases to remain close to the ground and concentrated in lethal doses. They were in an open area, but it says hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide can accumulate in low areas when the air is still because they are denser than air. And supposedly humans can easily detect the gas at levels as low as one part per million and are able to escape an area well before it reaches a toxic level, the Park Service said. Well, evidently that skier there at Mammoth Lakes didn't. 
So they zoomed into Old Faithful, and you can see the dead trees up along the different fault zones. See that up over there? USGS is only reporting one earthquake for the Yellowstone area. I guess you could say it's um, Island Park, Idaho, right there. Everything else they're reporting is from Stanley, Idaho. Only five earthquakes so far today. Uh, one of them is actually Harrison, Montana. And we know a lot of the earthquakes are not being reported. Another one more recently, we got this one right here. Let me pull this one. This one probably, let me pull it. It is probably Stanley, Idaho. Let me pull it. Yeah, it's got a P wave on it. Yeah, and you can see the harmonic tremors. Let me pull this over. And then we got another earthquake here. Let me extract that. These are all not being reported. Slight P wave on that one too. But it's on all three monitors. See that? That one, too, has a small P wave, very small. Um, I doubt that's at Stanley, Idaho, because of how small it is. And then going back another four hours, this is the activity there at the monitor at the Fishing Bridge, Yellowstone Lake. I mean, look at that. And the promontory. And then West Thumb, it's like, oh, my goodness. These are all very tiny um, small, really tiny, small microquakes, but it's, you know, harmonic tremors or volcanic tremors. Boom, 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 boom. Let me pull it from down over here. Oh, hold on. This here is the promontory. You know, and I've talked about that. Those of you who have not been following me, this is that area where they have the uh, crack under uh, the ground there at the bottom of the Yellowstone Lake um, that is trying to open up for a dike intrusion and the scientists believe it's probably rhyolite which is one of the most explosive types of magma you could possibly have so there's the signature of that earthquake right there and let's take a look and see well we got another Let's see, which one should we look at? we got one in red. If I can figure out where it's at. Right there. Okay. This one is marked in red for uh, the borehole for Yellowstone Lake and the promontory. It's not marked in red for West Thumb, but there is the earthquake signature. So the tilt data for the Norris Geyser Basin area. Top is north, bottom is east. Remember, they're measuring which direction the magma is flowing under the ground. Um, this one here, borehole 950, is just basically straight up. And that's what it was doing on my last report. And you can see it's still basically in the center of the disk, but it is moving. Uh, this time, kind of a north direction. Borehole 944 for Grant still is not working, has not been working since the 30th. How convenient. It was trending going towards uh, the east under the ground, the magma. What's east of Grant? Well, that would be the promontory. Now, the last time I did my report, the borehole for Yellowstone Lake was subsiding in both directions. Top is north, bottom is east. Looks like it's still doing that. And, yeah. So I would say the magma is still flowing. Um, probably a southerly direction. And here it is for the last 30 days. And we'll go back up. See, it was rising in the east. Uh, or flowing. Um... But now it's still going down. It's still subsiding. Borehole 207, Madison River. For the last seven days. Magma trying to flow under the ground eastward. 
But if you looked at the disk, or if you looked at the horizon, it would be rising in the north, the ground. And then the last 30 days. And then another monitor for the Norris Geyser Basin area, borehole 205. Remember, these are very deep wells under the ground. And, yeah, magma flowing a little bit more north under the ground. Uh, Yellowstone is only one of five volcanoes where they are measuring what direction the magma flows under the ground around the world. Only one of five, and that's what this X and Y triangle is for. Looks like the long-term last month trend. Yeah, it was moving eastward, but now it's kind of made a switchback where it's going to be rising up more so in the center. And you can tell that by the coloring. The more recent is the darker blue. So that's all I have for you right now. There's another line of trees that is dying off over here by this thermal feature. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, yeah, there's dead trees there. Um, please put them down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.